that, I've just gone half past ten, it's time for Mixing It with Robert Sandel and Mark Russell. Hello, tonight our special feature is a session with the Norwegian big band Jagger Jazzist and the British keyboard maestro Django Bates. They'd never met before, they came, they saw, they jammed. And in our shorter than usual edition we squeeze in some CD tracks by Guapo, Masri Makassa and Leafcutter John. And we begin with a track by Meadow House, the recording alias of Dan Wilson, from his album Tongue Under a Ton of Nine Volters. Well, as you can probably guess from the title, Meadow House tends to avoid the obvious, and on his first long-form release, the multi-instrumentalist Mr Wilson sounds like he's compressed just about everything he's heard in his 22 years on this planet so far, given it all a good stir, and then spent ages deciding what to call it. After much careful deliberation, he named this piece Minger. <laughs> House and a track called Minger from the album Tongue Under a Ton of Nine Volters, and that's on the alcohol label. And Mark and I were sitting there trying to enumerate the various traditions and influences. You had a particular theory about Chaz and Dave. Yeah, it sounded like Chaz and Dave jamming with the Harry Parch band, I thought. It sounds like he plays on all sorts of prepared instruments. The guitars and the piano sound really cronky. What I particularly like about this album is the, the, the sort of studied rough sound of it. The backing vocals all sound like football chants, and all the instruments are slightly out of tune and out of time. And it really gives it this very sort of deliberately rough feel and I like I like his very deadpan vocal delivery I think it's a very good album yeah the sort of junkyard uh, percussion track was particularly strong but the uh, that sort of English Cockney style of vocalizing it had me somewhat in mind of the uh, the infamous David Bowie track the laughing gnome actually Mark 
Right, the Norwegian 10-piece electro-jazz rockers Jagger Jazzist were coming to town in June and uh, we knew they were going to do a session for us, but how about doing something different, we thought? Maybe a collaboration with someone they'd never worked with before. Maybe some sort of a hero. So they chose keyboardist and composer Django Bates. We all met at BBC's Made of Ale Studios. Jagger had pared themselves down to a septet and Django appeared with a mountain of gear. They set up and played. Afterwards, I asked Django and the brothers Lars and Martin Hauntfeth what they thought the collaboration would sound like. We didn't know. That's, mm. That was why we were kind of uh, <laughs> were curious and a bit nervous, actually, because we didn't have any plan, because we, have, we haven't been working for a couple of weeks and, and didn't have any like basic idea for what we were going to do. So we just wanted to try to, to, to uh, check out this songs that are from the new album and uh, try if we can do something else with them. We well, tried to make them as different as possible, but yeah. some of it became very different. Yeah. Mm. So, Django, did you get chord charts, that sort of thing? No, nothing at all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what did you do? <laughs> well, I came into this room with an open mind. Uh, I've been quite purist over the last few years and just wanted to do exactly my own band and I'm just going through a phase at the moment of saying yes to weird things. Mm. And this really fits into that bracket because I got the call and I thought, yeah, that would be nuts. And went to the website and had a little listen to some clips mm. and just thought, let's take a lot of gear there, well, all my keyboards, mm. and see what happens. All right, well, can you talk us through a bit about what did happen? What was the first number you did and, and how did it turn we, out? The first thing we did was um, really without actually planning a anything starting to play a song called for um, all i know is tonight and and it ended up like a 20 minutes jam with a lot of really good moments but maybe yeah too long and maybe too boring yeah <laughs> so then you did a shorter version of it yeah. yeah and and how does this version differ from the album i mean it's, it's very different jazzy, it's yeah. basically the two melodies that we use on this but mm. Uh, on the album it's m much more arranged and uh, complex in a way and three or four other themes in a way and and uh, on the album this this song is very inspired by an English band called no, My Bloody Valentine and uh, like spiritualized and all these bands and we wanted to have this shoegazer wall of sound rock thing and this f the new version today became more like a jazz i don't know well, something <laughs> so what did you do Django? i suppose i listened to the guitars i'm not often in a band with any guitars and to be in a band with several it just kind of blend with those sounds which is nice for me because i end up using different sounds than normal uh just go with the flow really i really enjoyed the free intros and things like that Thank you. 
Good work, guys. That's the first of our session this evening from Jagger Jazzis in collaboration with Django Bates. That's a track called All I Know Is Tonight. There'll be two more from them later, and let me tell you who they were upon that occasion. Django Bates was playing keyboard through a laptop and also what sounded like wah-wah tenor horn. Lars Hauntveth was on guitar, Anders Hanna, guitar and effects, Martin Hauntveth, drums, Matthias Eck, trumpet, Eric Johannesson, trombone, and Evan Ormerstad, bass. Right, it's amazing what goes on in your own city without you noticing. Take this London-based trio, Guapo, for example. Black Oni is their third album, and it sounds like a meeting between prog rockers King Crimson and the Japanese noise band Boredoms. And I have to confess, I've never heard of them before. Daniel O'Sullivan plays keyboards, Dave Smith drums and percussion, and Matt Thompson bass, guitar and electronics. This is from their album, it's the third part, and it's called Black Oni Part 3.
swear I heard the ghost of Emerson, Lake and Palmer banging around at the end of that track, Mark. That was Guapo, Black Oni Part 3 from the album Black Oni on the IPCAC label. And I would say the whole album is pretty much like that. There are tracks which are more Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Than that <laughs> what I want to know is, does he hear. get the knives out and start <laughs> stabbing his keyboard at any point? Well, as I said, I've never heard of them before, <laughs> so I haven't seen them live. But um, that... I like the sort of long keyboard introduction there, which reminded me, obviously, of things like Steve Reich. It, it was one of the more sort of thoughtful moments on the album, should we say. A lot of it is very sort of histrionic and Emerson, Lake and Palmery. Right, now time for our second piece in our session with Jagger Jazzist and Django Bates. This is also a track from Jagger Jazzist's new album, What We Must. This is one called For All You Happy People, and it features Django Bates on an extended piano introduction. I didn't expect to play any piano here today, but it was a nice surprise. And in the middle, we kind of fell into this hole of just almost a duo with me and the trumpet. And it's this kind of thing, because we'd never played together before, ever, today. It's the kind of thing that only ever you can do once. That thing mm -hmm. where I'm kind of moving around the harmony and he's following or leading and we're kind of having this conversation for the very first time. That's it, we can't do that again. So I'm really glad it <laughs> worked out nicely and the tape didn't kind of run out or anything. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah.
a great session this was. That's Jagger Jazzis and Django Bates with For All You Happy People. There are only five of them playing there. Django Bates was on piano, Lars Hauntveth, bass, clarinet and guitar, Anders Hanna, bowed guitar, Matthias Ike, trumpet, and Eric Johannesson, trombone. One more to come from them later. Great piano playing from Django Bates, slightly reminiscent of Bill Evans, I thought. Now, Masri Makassa is a New York DJ who came to prominence almost ten years ago. Her unique blend of East and West Coast hip-hop and Arabic music sounded fresh then. It led to all sorts of remix work for artists like Arto Lindsay. Well, it's taken her a long time to put out her first album, but here it is. It's a compilation of her best work up till now, and it's called Definitive Works. And this is how the album opens, more lid. That was Masri Makassa, a New York DJ, and that was from her album Mutamassic, Definitive Works, and that was the opening track, Morlid, and it's on the Very Friendly label. Really? And although this is a sort of compilation of uh, stuff she's been working on over the last ten years, a lot of this has never been released before. She sounds great. I really like that scratching she introduced at the end, mm. like a rather old-school touch, but it really worked, I thought. 
And now to the third and last of our session pieces from Seven of Jagger Jazzist in collaboration with Django Bates. Like the other two pieces they played for us, this is a radically reworked version of a track from Jagger Jazzist's new album, What We Must. It's called Oslo Skyline. It was maybe the, the song that was more like closer to the, the album version. Uh, I don't know how it ended up like that, but it's a very rock song, so it was maybe different or difficult to play it otherwise. But, uh, I mean, it's very different, but the most close to the album version. Because it strikes me listening to Jagger music, there are lots of changes and everything happens very quickly. Mm. It's not sort of... Um, well, if it was me, it wouldn't be ideal music to improvise with, but you clearly didn't find that. Mm. Well, because today was more organic versions, I guess, and, and things kind of took their own time to reach the next stage. But yeah, I was taken by surprise a few times. Mm -hmm. That's why volume pedal is really good, because you can carry on <laughs> doing what you're doing, but just... Uh, like, like Make it sound like you meant to do it. Yeah, you just kind of fade away into the distance, <laughs> politely in an English way. <laughs>
great track that was too. That's Oslo Skyline, the last of our session from Jagger Jazzist in collaboration with Django Bates. Our grateful thanks to them. Let me just tell you that on that final track, Django Bates was playing his keyboard through a laptop. Lars Hauntveth was on guitar and as Hannah guitar, Martin Hauntveth drums, Matthias Eich, Fender Rhodes, Eric Johannesson trombone, Evan Ormestrad bass and Andreas Mjoss on shaker and piano. And um, the interesting thing to me about that session, aside from its extraordinarily high quality mark, was how different from the album it was. I mean, we got a little bit of the flavour of what we must on that last track, but the very heavy, bombastic production of the album is completely absent from most of the playing on that session, which has got some of the most delicate textured sort of jazz touch, really, of anything I've ever heard Jagger do. Yeah, well, I think it was a very good combination of talents, uh, particularly on the the middle number, which had the um, very beautiful piano by Django Bates. I think they complemented each other very well. I'd really like... Uh, to hear them do stuff in the future I, I asked them if they were going to collaborate and they sort of they both seemed quite willing so I hope they do but uh, I think this would be a good point to to solicit um, suggestions from yes. you guys I mean who would you like to hear in a session collaborating with each other because we're, we're quite lucky because when people come over for tour we can normally get them to do a session and, um, and we sit in our mixing office and rack our brains who would we like them to play with so come up with some suggestions yeah, a few dream teams from you lot would be uh, fantastic and we can try and take those forward um, we're always keen to hear from you of course and uh, I was very interested to get an email from Rollo Carpenter after our Brian Eno feature recently um brian you know of course was talking about um the difficulty he had uh, coming up with a lyric generator and um this definitely hit the spot with rollo carpenter who tells me that uh, he's been working on something like this for a while some years ago he says i created a variant of the ai that invented that's artificial intelligence that invented words and with some intervention composed dreadful poetry Anyway, he's asked to be put in touch with Brian Eno, so who knows what will come of that. We'll play you their album when it comes out. Mm. Now, um, details of everything you've heard on tonight's programme can be obtained via the usual routes. You can email us at mixing.it at bbc.co.uk. Go to the website, um, you know the address for that, slash Radio 3, where you can add your comments to the New Music Message Board if you've got any. Um, you can hear the show again at any time over the coming week. You can look us up on page 652 of CFAX, or last but not least, you can use the old snail mail, right to us at Mixing It, BBC Broadcasting House, London W1A1AA. We leave you tonight with a superb track by the British electronics man Leafcutter John, known to his family as John Burton. This is from a new double CD put together to honour the dead in the Madrid train bombing a year ago. It's the work of uh, Madrid resident Andy McGregor. No, not the Radio 3 man. And he's, uh, he had so many entrants from various artists, it actually went on to two CDs. And we'll put details on the playlist of how you can get hold of it. Anyway, this one is my favourite track from the whole album. There's no mixing it next week. We're back in two weeks' time with an interview with Bjork about her new soundtrack for the Matthew Barney film Drawing Restraint 9. Until then, this is Leaf Cutter John and The Lesson. Good night. Good night. Yeah.